today we're gonna answer your questions. Are you immune to jet lag? Sometimes. What about you? No, because flying for more than different time zones every day, you get jet lag for sure. She might say no. I might. I'm... I might say yes. Yeah. Uh, somewhat. After flying for a number of years, when you get to a certain destination, all you think about is to get some sleep. Difficult for the first two and three years. Mm. And then eventually, I think we are... Yes. We're not immune to it though, but... However, we have a technique on how to deal... She has a technique. I should learn from that. So that's why we need to keep fit and a lot of exercise. Different people have a different approach on how to deal with jet lag, so mine would be I'll always follow my Brunei time, my hometown. Do you have to be really fluent in English to be cabin crew? Um, yes, and uh, Malay as well, but it's a bonus if you have other language as well. We know English is not our mother tongue, tongue. so it is uh, not like musty, you are be so fluent, yes. sampai perfect your English. Atur. However, the way you communicate is very important to get the message across. You just have to have good communication skills, so with your colleagues, with your friends and uh, with our guests as well. Bearing in mind that our cabin crew has to serve uh, passengers from international, international travellers. Yes. Let's say you're doing Hong Kong flight or any other Chinese flight, we also have to learn uh, some simple word when we serve. Apa perbezaan warna-warna pakaian bagi cabin crew? This is what we're wearing. This is coral. Mm -hmm. They are our junior or premium crew, we call them. Yeah. So, apa yang kami pakai masa ni, it's green. green. So, Basically, Green is uh, leading. Uh, we are in charge of the whole cabin in economy. economy. And if we see the one in blue, that means they are the cabin services officer. But put it in short, it's the uh, CSO. Blue color ni, ya in charge overall of the aircraft. Sometimes kalau uh, blue not around, so uh, green color can take over the uh, duty. Sometimes you can see brown color. For me, I'm a cabin crew instructor wearing this brown mocha color. Yeah, mocha color to if you are lucky to see the orang sejala. Sebabnya kalau ada training ataupun ada check flight, they will be on board. How long does it take you, steward, to get ready before work? I think for me personally, I think it's half an hour, including shower. So, unless you get called up, so five minutes. <laughs> for myself, uh, my honest opinion, so I can get it within 15 minutes. Shave. Get my hair done, put on the dress, put on uniforms, and off we go. Yeah, it's really quick. Not for them, they... Unlike us, yeah. Are people with glasses accepted as cabin crew? Mm. You're stop wearing glasses, right? Yes, but so you get you can wear contact lens in uniform, or, but there's a certain type of glasses that you need to wear, so it's subject to approval. Yeah, you gotta have uh, a certificate from the uh, optometrist that states that you need to wear glasses. Glass, yeah. We do have uh, some of our colleagues that work yeah, that's wearing glasses at work. So a day in the life of a cabin crew. Eat, sleep, work, repeat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eat, sleep, fly, repeat. Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to be handsome? <laughs> yes. I mean, look at him. No, 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 no. Not handsome lah. I mean, more like presentable. As long as you are well groomed, you can portray yourself very presentably. You don't actually have to look like a superstar to become a cabin crew. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So presentable, neat, and professional. I mean, look at him. What type of safety emergency cabin crew mm -hmm. need to know? Oh. First aid. You gotta know your emergency drills. That's why the safety video is very important. Cabin crew, Ani, it's not just the cabin crew when you are on duty in flight. You have to learn how to become a firefighter. You have to know how to become a first aider. You're a doctor, <laughs> a nurse, a know. Know. What's the best part of the job? Ooh, the travel, of course. Yeah, the chances to travel around the world. Meet new people, new cultures. Yeah and learn new languages. Yes. Why do passengers must open the window cover before landing? We usually ask the passenger to open the window blind during takeoff and landing. That because to minimize the blind spot. It is for our safety. So in case anything happen, people from outside can see inside. Like, okay, ah, masih ada passengers di dalam. And then you all pun can see what's happening outside. Because the wee cabin crew will sit at the back. And uh, the passenger, they sit on their own seat. If they see something, they can always alert the cabin crew. What yes. questions do people always ask when you tell them you're a flight attendant? Boleh kirim? 
Itu dia. <laughs> Siok, tak boleh shopping. Kau shopping. <laughs> Keluar tak kamu tu, dia pot. <laughs> kamu dapat travel for free tu ah. Do you have to be tall? Do you have to be pretty? Kamu tak boleh. 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 What about you? Mm, not really takut, more like annoyed. So if it's uh, long turbulence, that's when you get uh, motion sickness for me. Maybe and during it's hard to surf, yeah. Before the turbulence ato datang, uh, the captain will advise us. We have our uh, procedure how to handle this. I guess all those years of flying, month of flying, so you get used to it. You just put your trust in the pilots and batawakal at the same time as well. So. They know what they're doing. Yeah. What's the longest duration you've stayed on the plane? Direct London. The longest flight time is around 16 hours. 16 yeah. hours. That's excluding our preparation before takeoff and after takeoff. Do you have to be tall to be cabin crew? My honest opinion, yes, you have to be at a certain level of height. The requirement for being tall as a cabin crew, it's because that you need to reach out for the compartments, you need to uh, grab the bags and put it up, and as well as for checking the cabins as well, for takeoff and landing, and as well as for pre-disembarkation. It's to check the cabin whether all the things have been removed from the aircraft. So yes, you need to be tall. <laughs> Your favorite layover countries? Australia. What about you? All of them. <laughs> I would say currently it's Japan. London. I love shopping there. <laughs> I think as for me, it would be Melbourne. Any destination in Australia is a favorite of mine. I prefer Melbourne. You can see the difference macam, uh, in terms of uh, keramaian. Atau. Macam di London, it's very, very packed, ramai orang apa. In Melbourne, macam uh, tenang sedikit. What's your favorite airport? I love Dubai, so I love the mm. Dubai airport. Dubai airport is so huge. There's a lot of sightseeing as well. Well, it's not every day that you're going to see a palm tree inside an yeah. airport. Singapore. Why Singapore? It's because it's like a shopping mall for me. <laughs> I think it's one of the top five airports in the world because of Jewel. With all the facilities and the duty-free shopping, yeah, definitely Singapore. How hard is it to handle angry passengers? Not an easy yeah. task, definitely. It depends on what sort of anger. And we are actually given uh, an extensive training for us to be able to handle on how to remain calm. We give them time to talk and we listen. We let them throw out the tantrums. So all we got to do is just listen to them. So if this angry uh, passenger tends to get abusive or tend to get unruly, to a danger with the surroundings, the aircraft, crew, and other passengers as well. So we have our methods. Will your passport be stamped every time they land in a country, including layover? Uh, I think kalau sekiranya sampai ke tempat itu semua stamp, 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 habis itu pasport kami. Habis panoh. The answer will be no. Kalau layover, we enter the country, we got a paperwork, uh, we call it GD. What we call a general declaration. Uh, there's a piece of paper, semua nama, semua details, and passport number ada di dalam atau. So basically, that's our passport upon arrival. We we need to show our passport, tapi in that kind of stamp. What will crew normally do during your free time? Our station. Sleep, eat, eat shopping, shopping, and repeat. repeat. <laughs> Yeah, on a serious note, you have to have a proper uh, sleep before you report for duty. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to work uh, feeling tired. We have our uh, rest, our requirements that we have to fulfill before each flight for us to be able to perform well. Best seat roles. If you're the type that wants to have both choices of meals ready for you, so you pick up the first row and the last row. If a person, when they travel at all, always feeling nauseous, always hates traveling because they know that they're gonna be uh, airsick. So the best seat row is in the middle, in the middle of the cabin. So it's a bit more stable. It doesn't go wobbly, going up and down like that. What does it feel to work during it? It's actually uh, rewarding because you can bring other passenger, other people back to their country. Overwhelming. Overwhelming. 
because everybody's praying in the morning, you just cross the road, the masjid is there, so work is work, so you have to carry on doing it. So the best part of this, like, you know, Israel has mentioned, the best part of bringing passengers back home to Brunei or going to their respective okay. places. Celebrate. From our own personal sadness, I thought it brings joy to others. To others. So, exactly. Some after second year, third year, biasa, yeah. when you feel like your colleague or family, and everyone bawa makanan, bawa cake, apa, uh, hari raya, we celebrate di luar. Now, there's no problem for us. It's biasa, kebiasaan sudah. Makeup tricks that last the whole flight. You guys know? There's a trick. Okay, okay. There's a trick. There's a trick. No, first you need to use a very good uh, skincare. If your inner is carefully taken care of. Yeah, and if you're flying loads of times, so you need to be hydrated at all times, no matter what. It's different when you are at uh, 39,000 feet up there, okay. so you get pretty much dry out pretty much easily. Lah. Can I come to the galley and greet flight attendants, if that's okay? Well, that is definitely okay, mums. Yeah. Of course you can. Yes, you can. If we're having a long flight, especially like going to a flight that takes maybe more than 4 hours, 12 hours. Let's say you want to stretch. Definitely not during service lah. Huh? If Do cabin crew get to choose which flight they are working on? How we wish. Unfortunately, no. Then again, uh, we've given a month ahead roster. Schedule our roster to uh, computerize. So, ikut nasib lah siapa dapat ane, siapa dapat ane. They're the one who choose where we go. So, we just have to go and work, put our dress on, uniforms on, and we just go. That's it. How many days of training to be a cabin crew? For the initial training, it will be for three months. Two sort of training courses. So, one is from the cabin services course, and the other one is from our safety equipment procedures. Each and every cabin crew has to go through refresher courses, refresher trainings and other exams on a yearly basis, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Uh, in order for them to keep themselves current with uh, what's going on, any new memos, to refresh, safety, yeah. safety procedures. That three months is not the only training that you will receive. Is it okay if I request food? refill or extra snacks on board. Kalau ada extra, the crew definitely will give. Of course, yes. Yeah. Request. Yeah, just request, just as We most probably be giving you guys the uh, the extra meals. Why not? There's no harm in it. So anything for our guests. Is there a guideline on how cabin crew should do their makeup and their to-do? Yes, for the RV has a strict guideline for the uh, makeup and their to-do. The yeah. reason is because um, we are in uniform and, and everybody needs to look professional and uniformed. A certain colours that they can or cannot use and then how they put on their tudong is also crucial just so that everybody looks the okay. same. Is it true you get free tickets for your family or spouse? If we are in uniform, yes. Kami uh, on duty so it's free. But then kalau sekiranya we want to go for holiday, mm, I wouldn't say free, more like Discounted. So we've been given privileges. We've been discounted ticket. Uh, we call it ID90, ID50, and FOC. But FOC itu pun, you have to pay something a bit uh, macam for the taxes. Yeah, taxes and uh, fuel kata. Yeah, so we have to pay that. Tapi indah banyak lah. Any advice for future cabin crew? You have to be mentally and physically fit. Uh, you're gonna face a lot of passengers, different attitude, uh, character different difference, ada kanakana, ada elderly. You will face a lot of international passengers as well. In, when it comes to safety, your body apa to mesti fit chua. For future cabin crew, mesti fit uh, mentally and physically. What is the most rewarding part of being RB's cabin crew? Being a cabin crew has actually molded us to become someone of quality. That's always in our mind. The training, the experience, and the discipline that we obtained, we, we bring that with us wherever we go, even in our personal lives. How we speak to people, because we have somewhat evolved from there, but we bring the values that we learn and we obtain from the cabin crew to where we are right now. And uh, that is something very priceless. Thank you for all the questions. We would like to wish all our cabin crew around the world Happy International Flight Attendance Day!